Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, in the previous sessions, uh, we discussed uh, the mechanism of Fed fund rate determination and how uh, Federal Resource System uh, announced the target Fed fund rate and in order to attain that, how they also fix the discount rate and uh, the interest rate on uh, reserves and after that and how do they uh, operate that the open market operation using the open market operation and the discount window uh, how do they attain uh, the desired the target uh, fed fund rate and then we found that actually after that um, the market will be finally deciding uh, at the end the market will be uh, determining the fed fund rate and the finally what we are going to get the average of the equilibrium fed fund rate we call it as effective fed fund rate uh, in this session we are going to see how fed is using uh, the three major tools of monetary policy to affect the fed fund rate here uh, we are going to discuss how for example changes in open market operation uh, using open market operation and how fed fund federal resource system is able to fix the fed fund rate by changing open market operation policy the purchase and sale and how they affect the fed fund rate and subsequently we are going to discuss how uh, changes in the discount rate that the borrowed reserve that the discount window using that how they affect fed uh, affect the fed fund rate and after that uh, we are going to discuss how changes in uh, reserve requirement and as well as the changes in the interest rate on fair reserve requirement affect our fed fund rate so let's start with the first one that is the changes the effects of uh, open market operations so how changes in the open market operations affect fed fund rate so here uh, the effects of an open market operation uh, it depends on whether the supply curve the supply of reserve curve initially intersects the demand curve uh, in its downward slope section vis-a-vis uh, -vis its flat flat section so we have seen that uh, the demand curve it has the downward slope uh, section as well as it has the flat section so we are going to see that when the supply curve we initially intersected the demand curve in its downward slope section and then how does it affect um, the fed fund rate so coming this is the uh, graphical representation uh, here uh, our assumption is that when intersection occurs at the downward slope section of the demand curve that means looking at this what we are going to show here is an open market purchase causes fed fund rate to fall whereas an open market sale causes the federal fund rate to rise so the initial equilibrium position is this uh, that you can see the demand curve intersect the supply curve at this point and accordingly we can see that uh, this is the federal fund rate ffr ffr uh, equilibrium ffr and at this point uh, the quantity demanded and quantity supplied in the market uh, is going to be this much uh, this is the demand supplied and as well as the quantity uh, demanded in the market so this is the equilibrium quantity that is the equilibrium uh, where the demand is equal to supply now um, you can also see here um, the interest rate the flat section of the demand curve uh, we know that uh, this is the interest rate uh, interest rate on reserve and this one the top part uh, the upper part this one is the discount rate that is the bank uh, the rate at which the banks can borrow from the federal resource system now let us see when we saw that the fed uh, engage in open markets purchase 
So when they make open market purchase, that means they are uh, purchasing the government securities from the banking system and as a result the net proceeds of the purchase uh, it will be credited into the account of the banks who sold their securities to the Fed and then in this process we can see we can see that NBR it become NBR uh, 1 that means the say, Fed uh, injects some more reserves into the banking system which we call here uh, non borrowed reserve that is through open market operation. So finally, uh, the new intersection point uh, is this one. So uh, what we can see that um, when the Fed uh, is purchasing uh, government securities, go Fed is purchasing government securities, uh, step one we can say that um, the supply curve shift to the right. So this is what we are seeing here, the supply curve is shifting rightwards. And the new equilibrium point, initial equilibrium point, let us call it uh, initial position number 1 and this is 2. And the new uh, equilibrium rate of interest uh, that the new Fed fund rate is going to be this one. This is the new uh, FFR, new FFR, uh, Fed fund rate is uh, this point. So at this rate, uh, obviously we know that there is a downward sloping demand curve. So when the Fed fund rate decline. Um, when there is uh, more reserve in the banking system, uh, then as a result, um, when, the, when there is more reserve in the banking system, the demand for reserve, uh, as a result, because of the uh, supply, more supply in the market, uh, the price, the Fed fund rate uh, decline, and then the member banks who are is borrowing from the Fed fund market, and they move along the demand curve like this, uh, they move along, and then they, that means they will be demanding more they will be demanding uh, more when the price decline they will be demanding more than the new quantity demanded and supply this is going to be the new uh, demand new new uh, demand for reserve and the new demand for uh, new demand for so new supply for reserve so this is the new equilibrium point and accordingly we can say that uh, the Fed fund rate it causes um, an open market purchase uh, by Fed um, leads to it causes the federal funds rate to fall. Okay, so this is uh, one of the, the the impact. Suppose if, uh, given that uh, the intersection of uh, of the supply curve happened at the downward slope section of the demand curve. So this is scenario one. Uh, then let us see what what is going to happen when the intersection occurs at the flat section of the demand curve. Suppose this is the initial intersection point um, where you can see the open market operations have no effect on the federal fund rate. So initially uh, if this is the intersection point we know that uh, the FFR the FFR is equal to the interest rate on here you can see that FFR is equal to the interest rate on uh, reserve, right? Interest rate on reserve, and because the intersection happens at the uh, horizontal um, uh, position, as a section of the flat section of the demand curve, and this is at, the, at this point um, we can see that uh, there is uh, the NBR that we are showing. This is the NBR. Uh, this much is the NBR we assume. Um, and this is the equilibrium position. Um, now let us see when uh, there is an open market uh, purchase. Uh, when there is an open market purchase, uh, you can see that um, there is no change. What the outcome? We can say that the um, as a result of the open market purchase, uh, the demand curve, the supply curve, the supply curve shift to the right. Right? The supply curve is shifting to the right. Uh, then however, we can see that there is no change in the Fed fund rate uh, because we have seen that in the previous classes, sessions that means Fed fund rate will never go below the interest rate on our reserves, right. We, we have seen that because the reason is that uh, in case if it goes the Fed fund rate is below the uh, interest rate on reserve, then it is better for um, uh, no one will um, uh, lend there because it is better to 
put all the reserve, uh, keep all reserve as excess reserve with the, so if they have fund extra fund that means excess reserve just keep in the Fed account and then they will be getting uh, the interest rate, the interest on reserve. So, no point in lending in the Fed fund market uh, at a lower rate, lower the rate lower than the uh, interest rate on reserve. Okay, so that means uh, it will never go below uh, the Fed fund rate will never go uh, below the interest rate on uh, reserves. So, what is the likely impact? So, one we saw that here um, the or as a result of open market purchase, the um, uh, supply curve that the NBR curve uh, has shifted rightwards, uh, but the Fed fund rate cannot fall below the interest rate paid on reserve. So, as a result, uh, there is no change uh, in the uh, Fed fund rate. And what if uh, uh, we say that there is a Fed instead of Fed market that open market purchase, what if uh, Fed uh, engage in a uh, open market sale? That means selling government securities to the government banking system and getting the net proceeds uh, that is collecting that net proceeds from them. So, that means uh, immediately you can see that when uh, the banking system uh, purchase, banks purchase of um, government securities from the Fed, uh, then the immediate impact is that they have to pay and obviously the reserve uh, in the banking system declining, right. Then the reserve in the banking system uh, will be declining. So, as a result still if it still the intersection happen at the uh, horizontal part of the demand curve then there is no change uh, in the uh, interest that the Fed fund rate. Uh, in contrast to that for the suppose if the uh, objective of the Fed is to increase the Fed fund rate then they have to reduce the reserve with the banking system then the option here is that open market sale that means keep on selling more and more government securities to the banking system, then that means the curve is shifting leftwards, the supply curve is shifting leftwards, uh, then you can see that now the intersection is happening uh, at the intersection is happening uh, at the downward uh, section uh, of the uh, demand curve. So, now you can see that uh, this is the uh, new Fed fund rate, uh, this is the new Fed fund rate. Uh, that means it is greater than uh, the initial uh, Fed fund rate. That means Fed fund rate uh, increases if the intersection happen at this point. So, we can see that if they want to keep on, if the Fed thinks that they need to, they would like to increase the Fed fund rate, then the option is to again you can see that uh, in increase to just to do more and more open market uh, purchase, open market purchase, uh, oh sorry, open market sale, then you can see that the equilibrium rate is, uh, Fed fund rate is. Uh, increasing. So, in that if they keep on doing, suppose if they want to, the objective of the Fed uh, is to increase the Fed fund rate, then the option is to uh, do more and more open market sale that is selling government securities to the banking system, then as a result uh, reduce the reserve with the banking system, then you can see that uh, the new intersection is going to be here, right. So, the curve is going to be like this. So, this is the way um, the, the using the open market operation uh, Fed affect influence the Fed fund rate. This is one of the tool. Uh, so, now uh, we are going to discuss how changes uh, in the discount using the another tool using the tool of um, uh, discount window how if the Fed is going to affect um, uh, the Fed fund rate. Again, uh, in order to discuss the here, uh, what we need to again consider that in order to say that the position of the supply curve and as well as the demand curve. So, that is actually important, very important. Uh, the true uh, real effect, uh, the actual effects of uh, any policy depends on where is the, what is the position of uh, demand curve and what is the position of the supply curve and especially the intersection, the position of the intersection of uh, supply and demand curve, whether it is at the vertical section, vertical section uh, or at the uh, horizontal section. Again, we need to think about uh, the horizontal section of the demand curve, horizontal section of the supply curve and as well as about the demand curve as well, whether at vertical or at the uh, horizontal part. So, here, um, we are going to see that 
uh, if the intersection of supply and demand occurs on the vertical section of the supply curve that is one scenario we can uh, visualize multiple scenario but for the sake of simplicity to manage our discussion let us make a few uh, reasonable uh, scenario let us see what is the likely impact so here um, our first scenario is that when the intersection of the supply and demand uh, occurs at the vertical section of the supply curve. So the interaction uh, of the demand and supply it occurs uh, at the vertical uh, section of the supply curve. This is the um, intersection point. Uh, again, uh, we can say that this is the equilibrium uh, interest rate and this is the quantity demanded and quantity supply. The quantity uh, of reserve demanded and supply is equal to this much. right? So, this is the initial equilibrium position um, and this one in any way you are clear that is the this is the uh, interest rate on reserve, uh, this is the discount rate you are clear by now uh, discount rate. Uh, Let us see the what happens here suppose um, there is a change in the discount rate, there is a change in the discount rate. Uh, let us see present it lowering the discount rate uh, shift the supply curve down right so this is going to be the new supply curve uh, new supply curve uh, supply of reserves so you can see that now the supply curve is going to be like that uh, going to be like that this way right this is the new supply curve so this is actually the supply curve shift uh, down supply curve shift the supply curve down uh, this is the new supply curve so what happened that uh, initially this is the uh, interest rate on discount a new new interest rate on this uh, disc, the new discount rate new discount rate is this one now right now what we have seen here is that uh, fed has reduced the fed has reduced the fed has reduced uh, the discount rate when Fed is reducing the discount rate obviously you know that uh, the supply curve uh, is shifting uh, downwards right the supply curve is uh, shifting downwards uh, let us see so but uh, since the intersection happened uh, at the downward sloping position of the demand curve we are going to say that uh, there is no change uh, in the Fed fund rate because intersection is still at this point though uh, here uh, the supply curve shifted uh, downwards we are going to see that no discount lending happens here that means the borrowed reserve that that through the discount window the borrowed reserve is still zero here that means the supply in this market consists uh, coming mainly uh, fully from the non borrowed reserve that means this much is uh, the supply in the market so no discount lending here uh, then as a result because the thing is the intersection is here uh, because always for us the fed fund rate the intersect the equilibrium fed fund rate will be at a positive point where uh, supply of reserve is equal to demand for reserve so our intersection point is this one so we see that there is uh, no effect uh, even uh, when they reduce the discount rate but uh, if they keep on reducing then we are going to see uh, there are some changes happening suppose if they reduce further if they keep on reducing like that then uh, the supply curve is going to be the a meeting interacting at this point uh, so the, you can keep on see that actually then the here it will be equal to here then after that the new intersection will be here then the FFR will be uh, declining right so you can keep on uh, when the Fed is uh, reducing the discount rate, then we can see that the curve will be shifting downwards, uh, downwards further and further. Then the inter intersection, because this is the supply curve anyway. This is um, the supply curve uh, that uh, that, that coming from the BR component. Uh, this much is uh, this much is from uh, this much is from uh, coming from FF uh, that NBR uh, after this is come whatever is coming uh, due to the, due to the change in the discount rate that is coming from uh, BR part right the borrowed reserve. Uh, so let us now see a new scenario another scenario when the intersection of supply and demand 
occurs at the on the horizontal section of the supply curve on the horizontal section of the supply curve so here a change in the discount rate shift that portion of the supply curve and the fed fund rate may either rise or fall depending on the change in the discount rate so here uh, the initial uh, equilibrium point is here you can see that the ffr the equilibrium ffr uh, is equal to uh, the discount rate right the uh, equilibrium happens at this point that the uh, happen at the br uh, part of section of the supply curve uh, that means uh, here there are some discount lending so this distance so this much is the what i am marking in red color this much uh, this much is coming from uh, the br component uh, this is this much is the br component and uh, this much is uh, supply that the, the demand and supply in the market coming from the nbr component that is through the open market operation right so this is the total uh, quantity demanded and supplied and of this the first part is uh, nbr and second part is br uh, this is the initial equilibrium position uh, where we can see that um, the fed fund rate is equal to the discount rate the equilibrium fed fund rate is equal to the discount rate let's now uh, uh, take the steps uh, the, uh, visualize what if the fed is going to reduce the discount rate when the fed is going to reduce the discount rate you know that uh, at this position suppose initial equilibrium is at this position then lowering the discount rate shift the supply curve down uh, then you know that this is the new supply curve uh, new supply curve is this one as one of reserves um, and you can see the new equilibrium position is this one uh, here you can see the discount rate um, the fed fund rate uh, is going to be this this is going to be the uh, new fed fund rate uh, new and the also equal to the new discount rate is also going to be equal to the new discount rate and here the new quantity demanded and supplied uh, is this much and of this you know that this part uh, this much part uh, is going to be the borrowed reserve component and this much is uh, the nbr component non borrowed that is from uh, open market operation and this part br part is from through the discount window uh, so what we have seen here is that um, when the intersection of the supply and demand curve occurs on the horizontal section of the supply curve then at that point of time uh, the discount window is going to make an impact uh, on the, in the fed fund market that means if the intersection is happening at this kind of uh, this kind of uh, uh, section that the slope uh, that the what we mentioned here then you can see that um, the change in discount rate the reducing a uh, reduction in discount rate is going to make an impact so similarly we can also see that what if they increase uh, the discount rate if they increase the discount rate uh, suppose uh, then you know that the, the new suppose if they keep increasing then you can see that the curve will be uh, shifting uh, upwards so we can keep on increasing discount rate when they are keeping increasing the discount rate we can say that uh, this one is es2 of r uh, S3 of R, uh, S4 of R. Uh, so that means they, they are actually increasing the ID. They are increasing the ID uh, discount rate. When they keep on uh, increasing the discount rate, then you can see that uh, is above this point uh, the new intersection is happening here. So is not making any impact. That means the demand and supply curve uh, where the intersection point we need to look at that so uh, the discount then you can see that uh, the fed fund rate uh, increases uh, now let's uh, see how changes in the tools of mo another uh, another monetary policy tool that is changes in reserve requirement how does it affect um, the fed fund rate so here uh, we are again visualizing two scenario what if um, 
Fed raises reserve requirement, that is one. Another one is what if when Fed uh, reduces the discount rate. So we are going to see that when the Fed uh, raises a uh, reserve requirement, we are going to see that the Fed fund rate is rises. Fed fund rate uh, rises. So, in contrast, when the Fed decreases reserve requirement, the federal funds uh, fund rate falls. So, let us see both scenario. Uh, this is our initial uh, equilibrium position uh, where we can say this is the equilibrium uh, FFR. Um, uh, now, see what is going to happen uh, when the Fed um, increase the reserve requirement. So, we can see that when the Fed is increasing uh, the reserve requirement, keeping other things uh, that means the, there is no change in even the Fed fund rate, you know that uh, the banking system, the borrowing banks, uh, they will be forced to, they will be forced to borrow more and at the same rate they are actually willing to borrow more, right? They will be there because they need to meet the reserve requirement. Suppose initially it was um, suppose 10 percentage that is the initial. Um, that is at this curve, at this curve initial RR is equal to 10 percentage. What if the new RR is going to be uh, 15 percentage? Then you know that the curve will be shifting uh, rightwards, the curve will be shifting because they need to same rate, they are actually willing to, they, the banks are willing to borrow more. Um, so, as a result, uh, you can say that the, the increase in the reserve requirement shift the demand curve to the right. So, as a result, what you can see that they actually was forced to borrow more and as a result, this is the new intersection point, this is the initial equilibrium position, uh, this is the new equilibrium position, uh, you can see that uh, this is the new Fed fund rate, the new equilibrium position is this one. So, what we have seen here is that when the Fed uh, increases the reserve requirement, uh, it will put uh, that the demand for reserve will be increasing in the market and it will put an upward pressure in the uh, Fed fund rate. Uh, then as a result, uh, so assuming that there is no change uh, in there is no change uh, in the reserve. Reserve that means uh, when we are changing, increasing the reserve requirement, we assume that in this diagram uh, there is no uh, increase in the uh, NBR or BR. That means there is no open market uh, purchase or open market open market purchase. Uh, so, the, in case if they do, for example, if they see that in case uh, in this scenario to keep the same FFR. Uh, they can do simultaneously, they can for example, uh, they see that okay, they are increasing the reserve requirement, but they do not want to see, if Fed does not want to see uh, the FFR is increasing. In that way, one option is to increase the NBR, increase the NBR um, this much that means open market purchase, then you know that the equilibrium, same equilibrium position happened. This uh, this will not happen, uh, this will not happen and this will be happening provided that uh, there is uh, open market purchase. But in this diagram, we are just assuming that uh, there is no open market purchase um, by the Fed. Uh, the Fed just uh, suppose if they want to increase the Fed fund rate by using the reserve requirement, then they can do in this way. That means increase the uh, reserve requirement and as a result uh, increase the reserve requirement and as a re result uh, you can see that um, the Fed fund rate uh, will be uh, increasing. What if they reduce the reserve requirement? What if they because here initial equilibrium position is this uh, FFR uh, equilibrium position and if they reduce the uh, reserve requirement uh, we can see that uh, the new equilibrium position is going to be here, uh, the Fed fund rate is going to uh, decline, Fed fund rate is, uh, new Fed fund rate is going to be this, this is nothing but this is equal to uh, the interest rate on uh, reserve. Uh, so, what we have covered here, uh, we have discussed uh, three tools and in the that the open market operations, uh, discount window and as well as changing in the uh, reserve requirement and in the next session, uh, we will continue this discussion and see what if they change the interest rate on uh, reserve and what are the likely uh, impact. Thank you, see you in the next session.